as you can see in the top of the screen, I have that notification that says I'm using a wired controller or some sort of controller to play Call of Duty Mobile or COD Mobile what the kiddos say. How am I doing that? Well, this is a USB-C style controller and it's just working. Don't believe me? Watch this, just working. And no, I'm not using any touch controls or any key mappers or anything like that. This is actually just the native controller doing its thing so that we can play with the actual native controls. How did I do this? Well, I'm about to show you that because this works out great with any USB-C style controller on at least the phones that I've tried it on. See, look at that controlling. And this is just like playing with a Bluetooth controller that allows this, but with USB-C connectivity, which is better for low latency on even higher end devices. So let's learn how to do this. Don't forget to like this video. All of the files and everything else are gonna be linked in the description of this video that I'm gonna be showing you here today. It's really not that hard to do, guys. It is something that you're gonna learn, and it's also gonna teach you something that I didn't know until about five months ago, or four months ago, I think it was, that you can do with your Android, from your Android, on your Android, as I get a nice double kill. So, before we do this, I'm just gonna finish this round and speed through the rest of this gameplay. Yeah. The built-in controller is a lot better than, uh, yeah, that's me. The on-screen button mapping tool. So the very first thing you're going to do, you're gonna download the zip file that I have provided you in the description below. This zip file contains important files that we are going to need to get this to work. So once you've downloaded this Xbox or handheld with classes, you're going to just long press on it or open it up and then grab these four files right here. Basically, just extract it somewhere where you know where it's going to be. I'm gonna extract it into my documents, into a folder in here called Xbox My Phone, okay? The reason why I'm calling it that is just because I know where that is, it's gonna be in there, and I know how to get back to it when I need to. The next thing is, go to your documents folder, go to that folder that you just created and grab this classes file, long press on it, click on the three dots, click copy, go to your three lines, go to your device name and paste it on the root directory of your device. The root directory is basically just this area right here, which is your area that shows your documents, your downloads, your picture folders, all that kind of stuff. Make sure that that classes.dex file is sitting right there. Now the next thing we're gonna need, we're gonna need two applications. One is called Termux. Termux is a command line tool just like your PC has or your desktop has, whatever, that allows you to run some commands. I know that sounds a little bit scary at first, but I promise you this is easy as long as you pay attention. Now, we're gonna also download something called Shizuku. Shizuku is an application that allows us to run these terminal commands on the root directory of our Basically, our not rooted device, okay? It's not a rooted device, but basically you're gonna be able to use what are called shell commands with ADB. Very easy. I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know so this works. Now, on your device, I'm gonna let you know Poco phones might have issues with this, okay? Poco phones, they even say this in the Shizuku, uh, Shizuku readme file. We're gonna enable developer mode. Developer mode allows us to enable something called USB debugging or wireless debugging. This allows you to write programs like applications and games and force them onto your device. This also allows you to write ADB commands, which allow you to do a lot of other things like remove bloatware from your phone and a whole bunch of other stuff. But how do you do that? Well, navigate to your device, wherever the, basically your about phone is, your system information, you have to find this wherever your device is, Samsung phones, it's about phone, and then your software information. And you're gonna have to find something called build number. Just Google search how to find this if you don't know where to find it and then come back to this video. Tap on that build number multiple times until you see an option for you are now a developer and then enter your pin for your device and it'll activate a developer mode. Now go back, now go into your system and developer options. You'll see this option right here called USB debugging. So scroll down until you see it, which is right here. Now I like to enable USB debugging no matter what. 
even though we're not gonna be using USB debugging, we're gonna be using wireless debugging, which is this option right here. Click on it, click always allow, click allow, and then it's going to basically allow us to use a wireless debugging pairing option. Now, how does that work? Well, I'm gonna show you that in a few seconds. Now we're gonna go over to wherever our Termux is. Did we end up installing it? No, we didn't. We only downloaded it. I did this in my last video. Now, go to your downloads, install Termux, and you're going to ignore this message. Just install it anyways. Google Play Protect is getting ridiculous these days. Click open, click allow. Now, Termux requires your storage access. So long press on the, the actual application, click app info, go to permissions, click on files, click allow. Now we'll be able to have access to our Termux files. Now go and install the Shizuku app, okay? Shizuku install. Now this is an application that's also on the Google Play Store. I haven't tested the Google Play Store versions. I'm just letting you know that. Now for pairing, this is very important. Make sure you pay attention. Click on the pairing button. Click on notification options. Click on all Shizuku notifications. Click back. Now, click on the button that says developer options. Now you're gonna go over to the wireless debugging. Keep going until you find it. There it is right there. Now click on it. Don't click the checkbox, the actual toggle switch or anything, just click inside of it. So what I mean is right here, click there and it'll go right into it. Click on pair device with pairing code, not QR code, pairing code. Click on that. Now a little dialogue is gonna pop up at the bottom and another notification is gonna pop up at top. You're gonna to enter that code. Mine is 085029. Your code might be different. It'll be exactly the, a completely different number altogether. Click that. Now you can start the Shizuku services. Go back into Shizuku. Go back. Go back again, click start. Now wait for it to run this and it'll say it'll take about three seconds and now we have authorization to run some shell commands. How do we do that? Well, I'm gonna be using an application called MU Files. MU Files allows me to get into my storage access framework, which allows me to see all of this stuff right here, like Mojo Launcher, Termox, Zealoth Launcher, even some emulators and stuff like that, which allow you to store the storage access framework. See how there's a Termux one? We're gonna click on that. We're gonna click the three dots, click on new folder, and you're gonna type in RISH, okay? RISH is what we're gonna type in here. Refresh it, there it is right there. Now go back to your downloads folder, or your documents folder, sorry, your Xbox My Phone, grab this RISH file, and grab this RISH underscore Shizuku dot dex. Now copy it, go to your three lines, go to Termux, copy it inside of this RISH folder. Now the next thing you're gonna do is open this shizuku readme.txt file. You're going to highlight this code right here, export class path, SD card classes, all the way until the end where it says hid, okay? You can use a text application or anything that opens up any text documents. Click copy. Now, I'm gonna tell you this. You can pin this inside of your actual uh, clipboard or whatever. So what I do, I'll just, open up something here, um, Google Chrome, go to my text box. Now, what you can do, go to your clipboard, long press on this and pin it so that it's always there. I highly recommend you to pin that because you're gonna wanna use that again in the future. Now, let's open up Termux. This is the scary part, not really. Go to Termux, <laughs> go to this page right here. Type in CD, like the compact disc, CD, Rish. We're gonna get into that Rish folder. Now type in bash Rish. Let's bash some Rish. Okay, now click on allow all the time. Now we're able to set up what are called shell commands. Very important, okay? You're gonna to have to do this CD Rish or and bash Rish section when you restart your phone or if you disconnect your controller and you try to connect another controller. I don't know why it does that, but <laughs> It doesn't hold on to it if you restart the phone and or if you disconnect your controller for a long period of time and reconnect it again. It doesn't take too long to go in though to the terminal and basically make sure that Shizuku is running as well because Shizuku is how this is able to do this and basically enable this. So now we're gonna jump back over to the top of the device and I'm gonna show you the next step which is going to be just pasting this export class path while my controller is connected. Okay, so you'll be able to see me do this command in here as well. You're also gonna see me connect my phone. 
I'm also going to show you that when we go into Call of Duty Mobile, again, this is only for Call of Duty Mobile, by the way, and Call of Duty Mobile has a driver that these controllers that are USB-C style controllers don't have built into them. Okay, so this controller is not going to work by default, but I'm just opening up Call of Duty just to show you that. But as you can see here, I have this controller connected and there's no notification at the top of the screen saying that I have a controller connected. So we go to multiplayer, controller's not connected, and it's not working. But how do we fix this? Well, I'm gonna show you that right now, okay? Let's go back home. We're gonna navigate back into Termux, which is all the way over here. And all you're gonna do is paste that export class path in here and press enter. Now you should see an actual thing that says virtual xbox wireless controller created successfully go back into call of duty press multiplayer and you'll get this notification right away and you can press ok make sure your joystick's working and everything like that set up everything else that you want to set up and it'll just work i tested it out with even the easy smx uh controller i'm getting the game seer g8 again just to test it out with that i only sent the g8 back because the, this game wouldn't work but now it works and if you have an X5 Lite, which is pretty cheap, you can get one on the affiliate link in the description below. I'm also going to put the affiliate links for other controllers that I suggest that are USB-C style controllers that work now with Call of Duty. Now, the only problem is, is that the controller doesn't pick up the, the A button when you want to select your actual gun, but that's not really a big deal. I can touch the controls and you can obviously get rid of the on-screen controls as well. But as you can see here, this is just using the actual controller that's built inside just like if you're using a actual xbox controller as well have fun guys go enjoy playing call of duty now on your controller that you bought probably paid 100 bucks for and you thought it didn't work for call of duty mobile because it's a usb-c style controller but now it does i'm gonna kick some butt maybe Bye. -bye.